Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game preview for the game Plunder A Pirate's Life. It plays two to six players, takes about 20 minutes per player, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Plunder, you are a pirate sailing across with three ships aboard the ocean. You will start with a location and a ship, and you're going to attempt to gather certain resources. We'll let you build other ships, and let you build masts and cannons to upgrade your ships, and you're going to be utilizing those to defeat pirate ships, gain their areas, and uh, obtain X marks the spot treasure locations. As you get, obtain different types of land, you're going to gain more cards throughout the game, and your objective is to gain 10 plunder points. Are you going to be ravenous and attack your uh, fellow pirates out on the seas, or will you attack the uninhabited lands that are controlled by various locations that are not pirates, or attack your uh, fellow pirates' locations? Will you blow up their ships? to gain plunder points or simply build more ships and if you can get those 10 points by the end of the game you will win the game it has a bunch of variations which i'll show you down below as to how you can play how it's set up and then we'll come up and i'll discuss the game and you can decide whether you like to pick it up down below with a link in the description here we have plunder a pirate's life set up for three players now because the game is so big i put a lot of the stuff on the board which you can see is how large this board really is and there is of course three additional players with three different you know, ship colors types that you could have taken and chosen from if you would like to play with more players than the three you see here. And of course there's the rule book for the game. You have spinners, masks, and cannons. There are the X marks to spot treasure cards. There are plunder uh, point cards. There are the resource cards and then a stack of resources of each of the different types that you can gain throughout the game from various ways such as gathering them from here. Uh, there's also going to be a storm location and the X marks the spots are going to exist on the map. There are six boards, both a front and a back. And you'll set it up by a two by three grid here and place your numbers and your letters all the way across in a rectangle fashion. Every single player is going to get a board here, which will illustrate what types of resources you will need to gain the specific types of things to either upgrade your ship, build a new ship, gain life, or a plunder point. Plunder points being the main way to win the game. And on the back, it will explain all of these things and what they're useful for. Everybody's going to get a certain number of cards to begin the game, and these are resource cards here. And you're going to gain one of them for each location that you own at the beginning of the game. And at the beginning of the game, everybody's going to get one ship along with a full amount of health on them, which is three, and a location with their little flag. And everybody's going to choose one with a one skull symbol. You'll also be rolling these spinner dies, which can have numbers and letters, to determine the locations on the board to place each of the X's individually and the center of the storm. So for instance, this is a J7. I would look for J. I would look for seven. I would place this right where the middle section is based on the dials shown. And and then players are simply going to begin the game. So in this case, if I were red, I would start with my resources at the beginning of my turn. I would then be able to gain one resource per location I own, which would be one at the beginning of the game. And then I can roll the die. Well, I'll be rolling the movement die here. And I will move all of my ships um, three spaces in any uh, combination I would like. So I can move one ship one space and another ship two spaces or a single ship all three. One and then Two. If I land on a space that has an X marks the spot, I will simply take the spinners, re-spin them, choosing a new location based on where I spun, and then I'll take one of these wonderful little cards here. I'll do what it says, plus four gold, and I would gain the resources from the resource pool, putting them into my hand, and then I could finish my movement. You can take as many actions on your turn as possible, if, as long as you're able to reach those locations or the uh, specific ships that you want to fight. You can A, fight with other players if you're adjacent to them, now, by simply rolling the die. Each player will get a die and they'll roll them and then you'll add up any cannons on your ship to that roll and whoever has the highest number will win. Tackers always win ties. You can choose to trade with other players giving them resources in exchange for other resources. You can go to these port sections and fight these locations here based on the little skulls here. So if I were to fight this location here with this ship, I, we would both roll. That's for me. This is for them. They would get the four plus two based on the number of skulls, which is six. I would get two plus my cannons, which is zero. Whenever you lose a fight, you lose a life. And if you ever take over a location, you would simply take one of your flags and place it on that location, signifying that you do in fact 
own it. Ties, of course, go to the attacker as well, and you can only attack on port locations. Additionally, there's locations on the board which have these little anchor symbols that will allow you to trade with any player. You don't have to be adjacent to them. Or you can trade into the bank two for one to gain a unique resource of your choosing as long as you spend two of the exact same resource. Whenever these get placed, replaced, you can simply go back to them and you can then simply gain a card and re-roll it. Another thing to note is you have to roll for your movement every turn. And when you do, if you roll a one, so if I simply was, it was red's turn and red rolled a, rolled a one here, uh, you would have to A, move the storm, and then B, move your ships based on that number, plus any sails you may acquire. So in this case here, I would have to spin these dials here, changing where the heart of the storm is, and that's going to be C6. I would look on the board, C, I would look in the uh, look here, 6, I'd place this here. If your ship is ever inside the storm in order to get out, so if I wanted to and I was purple and I wanted to move out of it, I'd have to spend two resources in order to do so. And if I ever wanted to get into a storm, I'd have to also spend two resources to do so. So to get in and out of a storm, it would cost you four resources. And that's pretty much what it does. The objective of the game is pretty simple. You're going to try and gain 10 plunder points in a variety of ways. Either A, you can discard five gold cards to gain a plunder point, simply getting you closer to victory. For every ship and location you own, that's going to be plus one plunder point. And whenever you defeat an enemy's ship, you're going to gain a plunder point as well. If ever your ship gets removed from the board and you have no ships, you can get back into the game by rolling doubles on your turn or simply by spending a plunder point and placing a new ship out there where your port is based on the location that you own and you'll continue the game as such. Uh, your objective, like I said, is to gain the 10 plunder points and as soon as somebody does, they're going to win the game plunder. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward type of a game. There's a bunch or a large variety of cards in this deck here that will do a bunch of different things and you are going to either be as aggressive as possible to other players or to simply locations that are unowned, gathering those resources to get those plunder points throughout the game in attempts to become the most infamous pirate captain of all. And that's basically how you play the game. You'll be simply rolling the die to move and then interacting with your ships based on the cumulative movement interspersed between them, gathering resources in order to get the cards, to get the ships, in order to fight the locations, in order to go to the X marks of spots, and of course fight and trade between your opponent's ships. It's a mix between bartering and combat. And of course, the more locations you get, the more cards you get. At the beginning of your turn, like I said before, you're gonna get one card for every location that you own so if you have three locations you'll draw three cards which is going to net you a large variety of resources throughout the game but beware holding too many cards in your hand can uh, cause you some trouble because the x marks the spot locations can have a negative effect on them as well or a positive for somebody else and a negative for you some of them can result in giving some player a plunder point or the strongest card in there in my opinion giving somebody a plunder point and making somebody else lose a plunder point uh, you could also take all the gold from all players steal resource cards from other players lose cards to gain cards and so on and so forth those x's will always be out there and you'll always be moving back and forth in order to gather them. The board situation is pretty simple, setting up a two by three grid and placing them out with a wide variety of different locations to visit and different ways in which you're going to be moving your ships, presenting a new and unique way to play each and every time. Of course, you'll be utilizing the numbers and the letters in order to situate where the storm is going to be, where the X marks the spot will be, and any cards specifically ask you to use them. Most of the cards, however, will just simply give you gold. You're never going to have a hard time determining where you need to go and what you need to gather and who you need to trade with in order to get the things you want. Gathering masts will allow you to move that specific ship additional spaces when you do choose to move it up to two. And of course, gathering cannons on your ship will give you a bonus of one or two, depending on the number of cannons you have on your ship, in combat. Don't fight locations with more skulls than you can deal with. Each skull on a location gives that specific location a bonus. If you control a location with three skulls, that location is yours until somebody's able to beat it, and it's quite challenging in order to do so. Remember, there's a lot of strategy in determining uh, the ratio of value based on your ship comparatively to a location or another ship that you're trying to fight when rolling die. 
It's a very simple game in nature in which you're going to be simply rolling dice to move, rolling dice to attack, attackers winning ties, and utilizing the best strategy possible in order to get from one location to another, whether it be an X or simply a land base, in which case you're going to want to plunder as much as possible. A pirate theme game that has a lot of functionality as a pirate theme game because you do feel like you are a sailor out there on the high seas moving around back and forth. The game feels a little bit like British versus Pirates, a little bit like Munchkin in the sense that you're racing to get to 10, and if you get too high, players are going to attempt to reduce your score total in order to keep themselves in the game, so at certain points players will align with other players in order to knock the largest player down a peg or two, and I do mean peg or two because you're going to be getting ships with life counts. You may feel like you're out when you have no ships or locations, but you can still get back into the game relatively easily. It'll just cost you plunder points pushing you back down. You never know at what point in time when you may be able to win the game with those specific X marks the spots or if they're just simply going to hurt you slash hinder you and make it more difficult for you to progress. The best way to win this game in my opinion is to gather location cards. If you can do so you are going to be very very likely to win by gathering tons and tons of resources in a quick and efficient way and then trading for what you need. Overall, Plunder is a pirate-themed aggressive combat style game, and it has a lot of variability when it comes to the board placement, where you choose to place your ships, and what you choose to do in the game. If you're interested in picking this game up, check out the link down below in the description. Plunder, a pirate's life. Is it for you? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching their Unfiltered Gamer board game preview for the game Plunder a Pirate's Life. If this game, like I said before, is something that you're interested in, go ahead and take a look. Link down below in the description where you can pick this game up. It's a family friendly based game that's very simple and easy to follow with quite a bit of strategy if that's something you're looking for. The theme is heavy in the game and you do feel it as you move around. We played this uh, even uh, again on New Year's actually last night. And and uh, we, we got to play with the largest player count, and that was quite an interesting uh, ordeal. There was tons of aggressive combat going on. We had ages anywhere from 14 all the way up to 36, so a family game for sure. Also, you can go ahead and take a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, our Discord, our Patreon if you'd like to join. Thank you guys for supporting us. A dollar a month's all you need. It helps us pay for things like shipping out giveaways, on our live stream every Wednesday. Don't forget, join us, join the community. It's a lot of fun. We do greatly appreciate you guys being there. Let us know if you're interested in the game A Pirate's Life, Plunder, something for you. If you played the game before, and if not, why not? Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to plundering with you next time. Terrible voice impersonation of a pirate. Arr.